Welcome to Reread. We are on James Lucino's Agents of Chaos. This is called Hero's Trial. This is book one in the duology here. This happens six months after Chewbacca's death. Um, Chewbacca is finally having his funeral here. And you're thinking, why did it wait six months? Well, there must be some Wookiee rituals there. And you're thinking, okay, well, why are, isn't everyone there? Eventually, if I'm, if I, like I said, it's been a while since I've read New Jet Order, but I think there's a ton of people, like from here on out, whoever Han meets says, I'm sorry I didn't make it to Chewbacca's funeral. Like Wedge, Lando, all the people who you thought would be there. I think what happened in the forums, uh, if I remember right, now someone can correct me, but I think when this book came out, they went, hey, where's all these other people? We said that in the forums. Why isn't so-and-so? Why isn't this a big deal? And so later on, the other authors kept, you know, when they talked to Han, they say, sorry, I couldn't make Chewie's funeral. This is why I wasn't there. <laughs> I, I truly believe that happened in the forums and the, and the author's answer. Because it was, it, it was re authors read the forums and Lucasfilm read the forums and uh, you know, they would try to answer those questions or put those reasons in there later on. But it is kind of weird that not many people showed up for uh, outside. Some people say that, oh, they didn't allow Wookiees. I think one of them, I think uh, Stackpole says, I mean not Stackpole, Lucino says that and one of his characters, sorry I didn't make it to the funeral, you know, um, thing. But I don't mind it. Uh, 3PO, and this is done way earlier. I totally forgot about this. 3PO is thinking back on memories of Chewbacca and he starts getting a flutter, a flicker. And his circuits start missing because he's getting upset. He's feeling emotions. And this is a storyline that eventually got dropped in the J order. And I remember something way later on where, where 3PO is contemplating death and whatnot. And I thought, wow, that's really good. I wish they would have picked that up and finished it. Uh, but they had started a lot earlier than I thought because a lot of times when he starts having good memories, he has that flicker again. He doesn't understand what that is. Why is he having flicker? Because when he looks at Han and you know his friendship with Han, he feels bad for Han. That flicker starts again. I really do love that story arc and I really wish maybe not in New Jersey order but later on I wish they would have picked it up that is a that is a missed opportunity in the EU I think because I think that would have been a really good story you know 3PO getting an actual conscience and feelings and stuff anyway um, <clears throat> Han doesn't want to continue his life debt uh, but Lobaka and uh, uh, Lumpy, Lumparo, what it? Woro, Woro, Woo, Waru. That's his name now. <laughs> How did I forget that? Anyway, they want to pick up the mantle. Now, I don't remember, and again, it's probably in later books. I don't remember if that's ever resolved. Like, I, I know for a while it says, no, I'm just not ready. I'm not ready right now. And they say, okay, that's fine. Just tell us when you're ready. But then he never, they never bring back any, either of those characters, Waru or Lumpy, I mean, uh, uh, or Loey, Lobaka, back into the uh, uh, life debt storyline for any of the books going forward. And I wonder if that was ever addressed. It probably was. It probably is later on, way later on. I'm probably just forgetting when. <coughs> um, but I just don't know where, if it was addressed. Anyway, um, uh, uh, Silgal is trying to, she can't save Mara from her illness. Uh, Mara is still uh, struggling with this. She's fighting this, you know, of course it's a Vong Ill illness we find out about. Um, for some reason, there's this random conversation that Mara has with Luke about all his loves, all his past loves, even in the EU. And like, where are they now? And, and, and Shira Bree is brought up. And I'm thinking, did they do that? Was that just something they just did to make some... Because Lucino loves continuity. I mean, he it's beautiful how he ties in so much continuity. But I, I, yeah, now that I'm thinking, even though they probably didn't do this, it's a great seed to plant to say this is what's happening in Legacy of the uh, Legacy of the Jedi. Again, that's probably not the case, but it, uh, you know, now that it, 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 it's accidental, you know, or coincidental connections here that I just I really do love and didn't didn't see the first time reading through. Obviously, um, anyway, uh, Han uh, reminisces over the Falcon, Chewbacca. Uh, you know, how it just, you know, it doesn't feel the same. In fact, he doesn't want to fly the Falcon at this point because when, I love this, when the ramp lowers, it kind of sounds like Chewbacca's roar, like Chewbacca's roar, like, like, hey, buddy, it's just reminding him of good memories. He feels like it's insulting to go in there. And there's a great Indiana Jones throw uh, wink that I did not see, but Han always felt that the Falcon should be belongs in a museum. That's an Indiana Jones reference. That's really slick. I did not catch that, I don't think. Or I've forgotten about it since rereading it because it belongs in a museum. You know, the Falcon does. Obviously, it belongs with Han, but anyway. Uh, he sees Roa 
from Brian Daly's trilogy. Now, uh, I did not know this when I first read the books, but now I know James Lucino was good friends with Brian Daly and wanted to incorporate his uh, his stories in there. And uh, I think the first time I read it, I forgot that Roa was in the original series. All I remember was the uh, reference to Bullocks, which I think is in the second book, because uh, it wasn't in this one. But anyway, uh, uh, he references Roa here, and uh, it's nice to see Roa again, but Roa says his wife has passed away. She is part of the casualties from the Vong. And, of course, yeah, he's the one that says, I, I'm sorry I didn't make the funeral because the Wookiees are very uh, hesitant on allowing humans on their planet. You know, I didn't get clearance. So, again, that this is what you'll see later on in other books. I think everyone's saying, sorry I didn't make the funeral. <laughs> it gives their reason, which I'm, I'm fine with. I'm fine with that. <coughs> um, man, and speaking of connections, Lucino, A.C. Crispin is really a master of tying in continuity, but Lucino kind of outdoes her here. Lucino made so many connections to the Bantam novels, to the comp books, to uh, role-playing. I mean, he really just, he knows his stuff and he's showing off. He's showing off, and he should, because it's just incredible the amount of knowledge that Lucino gives and the amount of, you know, throwback candy, rewards for people who have been reading it all the way through. Here's a little, it, it won't lose, I don't feel like it loses anyone, all these connections do. But what it does is reward those readers who have been really dedicated to the EU, and I absolutely love it. Um, now, this has a story where the Vong are sending a priestess named Elaine, as she's going to secretly assassin, hopefully, some Jedi. Uh, she has poison within her lungs, and she takes four deep breaths or something like that, shallow breaths, and then she can release poison. And so she pretends to be a defector, which at first... They're, um, they're hesitant to believe her, but after an assassination fails, which, by the way, there's a really cool scene where this human is yelling at her. He points and snarls at her and yells and starts running at her, and they're like, what's going on? Then suddenly his m mass starts falling apart, like he starts getting bones in it. He's, he's slowly transforming or b blowing out of his mask cause, to show his Vong form. Very scary scene. Very graphic. Very good. Again, Lucina is just excellent at this. Um, now, Han, another, another connection I forgot, Han, uh, not really a connection, but just a throwback, Bosk, an older Bosk is at Jubilin, uh, Jubilee Wheel. I don't know how I forgot about this, but Bosk comes across Han, and they get into a fist fight on the Jubilee Wheel, which is really good. Uh, Big Bungie is mentioned again. He's now the big boss. He's Boss Bungie now. And he is uh, so random, I did not catch this the first time. And even the second time, I had to look up his name, but he's from Star's End. I say he's got to be from, you know, from Brian Daly's series. But he's such a random one-off, you know, mention, I think, in that series. Though Lucina thought, yeah, I'll bring him. I'll talk about him. Um, Queen of the Empire is in this one. That was uh, Queen of the Empire. It was also in the Jedi Prince series, which I did not realize that connection there. Um, but uh, that's mentioned as well. Like a lot, a lot of mentions. A.C. Crispin's uh, series gets a lot of mentions in here. Uh, it's so beautiful because... While he and um, uh, Droma, uh, his partner in this, um, the, the Rhine, who is his partner through this series here, um, who has never heard of Han Solo. When he finds out his name is Han Solo, he's like, who are you? He's like, you seriously haven't heard of me? <laughs> it's great. It's great that there's someone who hasn't heard of him. And by the way, their banter back and forth is hilarious. It's really, James Lucino finds a Chewbacca replacement it makes you fall in love with him in one book. Honestly, I was like, Droma and Han forever. I was ready to get a tattoo of that. Not, not really, but, you know, a, you know, you know, not a literal fat, uh, tattoo, but a spiritual tattoo saying, you know, Droma and Han for forever. <laughs> anyway, a beautiful scene on the ship where Han is listening to a song that Bria used to sing. And he's thinking back. And John goes, you're thinking of the past, aren't you? And, yeah. But, you know, he said, just an old friend. And that's kind of how the cha uh, chapter ends. It's really wonderful. It's really wonderful. I mean, I'm, 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 honestly, Lucino just outdoes himself here. I know I keep saying Darth Plagueis is his best, but now that I'm rereading his uh, New Jet Order books, this really may be his best. It really may be his best. Anyway, uh, Kalinda from the Carillion Trilogy is in it. Um, uh, Han actually... Uh, meets some of the uh, New Republic intelligence on the Jubilee Wheel. I think it's the Jubilee Wheel, or sometime, uh, Queen of the Empire, maybe. Uh, the ha uh, as that agent is injured, he hands off Elaine and Vergier to Han for their safekeeping to get away from the Peace Brigade. Peace Brigade. Peace Brigade. Why can't I say that? The Peace Brigade 
and the Vong are pretending to go after them, but now the Vong are like, oh, we really can't chase them because we want Elaine to get to the Jedi. And then right now she's on route to go meet with the Jedi because she says, I have a cure for the spores or whatnot. Or she says, I have information about the spores that infected some of your Jedi. And of course, they're ta she's talking about Mara. And uh, so anyway, but they're familiar with Han because he, he did a job for the NRI before. So now Han takes over. It's completely hilarious because now she's, Elaine is not being treated nicely. Han's being very rough with her. <laughs> you know, get in, sister. I'm going to leave you here. And it's just, it's really, again, more great banter between the two. Han sees through the ruse immediately. He realizes the Vong are not attacking like they should. Like he, he's, he's good, but he's not this good. And he actually thinks that the Vong are, it's all fake. He calls Elaine out. There's a great fight where of course, Elaine releases the gas, but releases it, it traps herself into a, uh, a compartment. Han escapes, or Han puts on a breather mask. Han does not get infected. She does. She dies. Vagir escapes, thanks Han for letting him loose, or her loose, excuse me, her. I keep saying he for Vagir, but, uh, or Vagir, however you spell, uh, pronounce her name, and I don't care. Uh, but anyway, uh, she gives tears, which we know is going to help heal Mara, and then leaves. And... She comes back later on with the Vong, and I'm not, at this point, I know I'm going to read it later on, I don't know how, but she does, she acts like she's escaping, but she eventually goes back to the Vong, I know that, because I remember that, but she does escape, and thank Han, and give her tears in the vial. Um, now, Mar is healed, she takes the tears and feels like, oh, this is instantly going to heal me, and so she's feel, feeling her strength, and now the virus is going away. Um, and another, it's, it's like one paragraph, or two paragraphs, Han does forgive Anakin. They do have a talk. I had totally forgotten about this. I've totally forgotten about this. Because I knew there was some awkwardness at the beginning of the book between, you know, Anakin and Han are trying to, you know, smooth things over, but Han's still not saying the right thing. And I thought Anakin dies without Han, you know, actually saying, I forgive you, son. You know, like, you know bring it, like they had an uneasy truce, you know, that they didn't talk about it, but they needed to talk about this last thing. And I didn't think they had that talk. But yes, they do. In two paragraphs, two paragraphs, he says what Anakin needs to hear, and finally, that rift between them is mended. Again, did not remember this. Did not remember this. It makes Anakin's death later on less tragic that Han didn't get to say the words he should have said. But still, um, great scene, great scene. Um, I also want to say that there is, I didn't write this down as a note, but there's a hilarious, I, I totally forgot about this too. There's a hilarious chapter that Lucino wrote. It's just about Kalinda uh, talking to the NRI, her boss, and telling her what's going on. Like, what happened? What do you mean the defector's dead? Well, Solo found it. How does he know? Well, he has some proof. Well, where's the proof? Well, it's kind of gone. Why did you do Well, he was under... And why did you hand them off to... Well, he did work for us, and we technically... You know, funny story, boss. We haven't ever taken him off the roster for the NRI. It's just really funny. It's like, why did you give him to Solo? Solo has kind of screwed everything. Even though he kind of... He probably did save... The Jedi he probably did the right thing, but goodness gracious, we could have kept her. We could have saved, you know, we could have, you know, deactivated the bomb or whatever and kept her and, you know, got information from her. But that Han was kind of a wild card, and you know, that whole uh, as Kalinda's kind of breaking down the whole case. It's so good. It's such a funny chapter, and I totally forgot about it. Um, overall, overall, book one of his duology is excellent. It is excellent. Honestly, not even joking, some of Lucina's best writing. Now, I'll decide, I guess, for, for since it's a two-part story, I'm going to call it one big overarching story here. Is it the best thing he's ever written? Well, we'll find out next time when I review book two.